Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your global weather extremes update for Wednesday. And we are tracking quite a few systems around the planet. We're going to cover tropical storms around the Pacific Ocean, also the latest on Hurricane Larry here in the Atlantic, going to get quite close to Bermuda. We've got the latest tracking on that one very soon for you. We're also taking a look at other lows and highs around both the northern and southern hemispheres. We take a look at rainfall accumulation, some of the biggest areas of rain over the next 24 hours. And believe it or not, we've got some snow falling in Africa around the equator. We'll tell you where. So we've got all the details coming up very soon, but we kick off with the low pressure zones around the planet at the moment. So we'll have more details about Hurricane Larry in a moment, but this is the main system right here. We've got another tropical storm right there near Mexico that's likely to remain at sea. Over on the western side of the Pacific Ocean, we've got a low, just more of your standard low pressure zone up here near Japan, but we've got a tropical storm right here and another one over the top of the Philippines. Quite hard to see, but there are two of them. This one's likely to be tracking in towards Taiwan. This one, probably eventually, eventually ending up in Vietnam. So we will show you the tracking for those tropical storms in a moment, but we'll continue on with the low pressure zones around the planet at the moment. And the Southern Hemisphere, the main low down in the South is pushing in towards Chile and maybe Southern parts of Argentina. It's out here in the Southern Ocean slash South Pacific, quite a big system. And it's got gale force winds, especially on this Northern side up to 100 kilometers an hour at sea. And it's part of a number of big low pressure zones tracking around Antarctica at the moment. This is Antarctica and the low pressure pressure zones are right here. That's the low that we were just looking at. But I wanted to show you this map to also highlight all the high pressure zones, which are all connected across Australia, northern New Zealand, the South Pacific, and in towards the southern part of South America, and then South Africa as well. So that big block of high pressure is certainly very dominant right now, but with some big storms just to the south of them all. And then we go back to the northern hemisphere and the largest high pressure zone we can see is in this zone here across parts of the Ukraine and Russia. And it's really keeping a large portion of Europe fairly settled, although there is a weak low pressure system just off the coast there of the United Kingdom. So let's take a look at temperatures and we'll start off with the United Kingdom because we've got, well, we'll go with London. We've got 30 degrees Celsius coming in for Wednesday. That's nice and warm, but later in the week, 22 degrees as that low moves through with a temperature drop. As we go through into Switzerland, Zurich, 27 degrees Celsius at the moment, dropping to 21 degrees or 80 Fahrenheit down to 70. The hottest weather on this map through this zone here in Northern Africa, and that's where the temperatures are mostly into the 40 degrees uh, Celsius mark or the 100 degrees plus uh, in Fahrenheit. And the other center is Dubai, uh, a little bit cooler for the last day or so with a bit of a very light northerly coming down from Europe, really, in Russia. 42 degrees, though, as we go into Wednesday, so uh, that is nice and warm. Nice might not be the right word. As we go around the rest of the world, uh, Buenos Aires, around 15 degrees Celsius. That's about normal for this time of the year. And directly over on the other side, Santiago, 20 degrees Celsius today, but uh, you warm up to 25 degrees as we get to Thursday. That's pretty warm for this time of the year, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the other side, we haven't mentioned much about South Africa. We should do, especially me as a New Zealander, because we play rugby with South Africa. Uh, temperatures 18 degrees Celsius on Wednesday. You're warming up pretty warm, 26 degrees by the time you get through to Thursday. And as we take a look at North America, we're seeing some hot weather continuing on through the uh, central areas and out towards the southwest. But as we take a random place, North Platte, Nebraska, which is around about here, um, 80 degrees, 100 degrees Fahrenheit for you, that's pretty hot, uh, into the early 30s. That heat goes all the way up into the northern parts of Canada. Uh, at the other end of the country, down towards the Mexican border, uh, around Phoenix, pretty hot weather there into the low to mid 40s Celsius. And for those of you in America, 110 Fahrenheit. And Aqualuit up here in none of it, Canada, 11 degrees Celsius down to five degrees as we go through this week. And look at that, 50, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So fairly cool and getting down below zero at times. Uh, gosh, that's quite early, isn't it? But I suppose that's what happens when you live that far north. And let's take a look now at more detail in the tropical part of the world. So this is Larry. So we mentioned the other day here is Bermuda. It's a very small uh, part of the map. 
about 65,000 people live in Bermuda. And hello to Louise, if you're watching. Uh, we've got uh, category two, Larry, as it tracks by. I mentioned this the other day, uh, when you see a tropical storm or any sort of low pressure system curving like that, it's a little bit like a car going around a corner a bit too fast, and sometimes they can slide. So I wouldn't say that Bermuda is outside the risk zone, I would certainly say that you're in it. When you take a look at the National Hurricane Center, it does show Bermuda around about here in that lime green coloring. 20 to 30% probability of those damaging winds coming through for you. So. It's, it's one to keep an eye on. For now, it looks as though it will be just east of you, but you've got to be careful. It could slide a little bit further. High pressure out over the rest of America helping to guide that. But you might find the Atlantic side of Canada, uh, St. John's there, might be getting some of the blast of that storm, although it's not likely to be a hurricane at that point. Over in the uh, spaghetti models, that shows you know, the different computer modeling tracking it. Very consistent. There's Bermuda, it's very hard to see, but it's, it's still a fair way just off that tracking line. The modeling very consistent there, actually quite consistent all the way through to Greenland when it falls apart becomes what they call extra tropical. We're also tracking these two other storms. I'm not 100% about the pronunciation of that one. I'm gonna call it um, Kanthu, but it might be pronounced differently. Uh, that one here could become a tropical storm. It pushes in towards Taiwan, and then it goes in towards mainland China. This other tropical storm down here, not likely to become a typhoon as it crosses over the Philippines. It's only just starting, but it could become more of a serious system as it moves into Vietnam. Hanoi could be in the firing line for that system in the next few days ahead. So that's another one to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at the rainfall accumulation, the more extreme rainfall. Most of it falling around the Philippines, over 100, 150 millimeters of rain coming through for you today, or a few inches. And then the next lot of rainfall is really around Vietnam. That's where you'll be seeing similar rainfall totals. And that's before that tropical storm that's over the Philippines reaches you in Vietnam. Uh, around the rest of the world, we're looking at some heavy rain in Africa, and look at this, around Ethiopia and pushing down into South Sudan and Uganda. Now, I'm a bit of a nerd, and I love tracking things like snow and ice around the equator. Now, Kilimanjaro, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is down here near Nairobi, has got snow forecast. That's, that blue there is indicating snowfall, so that is expected to be falling there at the moment. So that is kind of normal. I mean, it does snow on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. There are actually some glaciers at the very top there. So we will be seeing a bit of snow falling there, but that's just something a little bit different for you to focus on. We've also got heavy snow falling across Uruguay, uh, also coming into parts of Argentina. That'll be very welcome, where it's been very dry for a number of years. This area here, pushing into Brazil, showing some heavier totals getting up towards 100 millimeters of rain. And in North America, we've got low pressure around parts of Canada. So Ontario, Quebec, getting some rain and showers, pushing through after a very beautiful sunny day yesterday. And we've got some heavy downpours here around Illinois, Chicago into Gary, we'll be seeing some heavy downpours, Indianapolis as well, uh, getting some rain in that zone. All right, before we finish, I just want to take a look at a potential storm one week from now. We've got a potential typhoon right here pushing into, uh, potentially into Shanghai, also maybe into Korea and Japan. So this is worth keeping an eye on. It's a whole seven days away. It is not locked in, but potential typhoon seven days from now around that part of the world. And that is all from me. We end today on the image of the day, which is the air pressure map showing Hurricane Larry. And the reason why I put this on is because there's no other low pressure around. This is it, across the whole side of the Atlantic out to Africa and pushing in across the Caribbean or Caribbean. I'm never sure if it's Caribbean or Caribbean. No doubt someone will let me know on YouTube. And we've got a little bit of low pressure up here in Canada, but really Larry is the main feature at the moment. And that is all from me. Thank you so much for all the comments on YouTube. We're quite overwhelmed with the number of people following us. So thank you so much. We'll be doing another update again on Friday. And please do keep the comments coming. And if I'm saying or pronouncing anything incorrectly, please do let me know. New Zealanders, we've got a bit of a bad habit of not pronouncing things properly. So uh, your help would be appreciated. That's all from me. For more details, weatherwatch.co.nz for New Zealand and our IBM business partners at weather.com for everywhere else. We'll see you Friday.